Hello my friend and welcome to another video in which we are gonna explain another piece of the puzzle on becoming a wizard in computer science. Today we are gonna talk about the text editor, which is probably the most important tool for programmers, right? Because you're gonna spend a tremendous amount of time inside this software. Indeed, as you easily understand, the text editor is where you're gonna write your code, where you're gonna write your programs uh, in C, in our case. That's where you're gonna write, that's where you're gonna debug, and believe me, you're gonna spend a tremendous amount of time debugging your code. So you need a tool that is helping you in a fast and easy way to find these little monsters, which are always hidden inside your code. As you surely know, there is plenty of options regarding text editors. Like all the things in life, you have a plethora of options when you search for a specific tool. I personally use Vim. I think it's the best. I think it's easy when you know a little bit of commands that today we're gonna see. At the end of the day, it, it is gonna depend on you. There are plenty of good text editors, for example, Visual Studio Code or Atom are pretty good. But you know, for me, it's like uh, an habit. Vim is an habit and uh, you know, when you have a bad habit, quote unquote bad habit, is very hard to change. Anyway, this video is gonna be useful even though you're gonna use other editors such as Visual Studio Code, which is pretty well done, I'm gonna show you later. Because Vim is an idea, it's not only a software. Vim is a way of doing stuff. Indeed, this is a program written by programmers for programmers. So it has all the features to move fast in the file, to search very fast in the file, to make uh, some changements, uh, some deletion in a very fast and easy way. That's a superpower, I think, and that's why I love Vim. Or I would say I love the way of Vim. You will understand very soon what I mean. So Vim is very special because it is not a normal text editor, like for example, Word or a notepad in Mac OS, because it is a model editor. So basically it means that there are different ways, different modes by which you can interact with this tool. So long story short, Vim is not a click and type kind of editor where you just put the cursor in the exact position in which you want to write and then you just start writing, which is the, the most intuitive thing to do, right? It's easy, it's fast. With Vim, you have to use special commands to change, to switch between modes and to interact with this software, with this text editor. It has a bit of a learning curve, but once you learn, once you move the first steps, you are gonna love it. You will move tremendously fast. It's all the things you have just to be patient a little bit initially, and then it's gonna be magical. All right, today I want just to introduce you to two modes, which are the most important ones. We have the insertion mode and we have the normal mode. What does it mean? So very simply, insertion mode, you're gonna fill your file with characters, okay? You have a normal mode, on the contrary, when you want to do something different. For example, you want to make only some corrections, so you want to delete some parts of the file, you want to move around, you want to check. Essentially, you have an insertion mode when you do stuff and a normal mode when you check stuff. That's basically the idea of them. There are, of course, other modes, but this is just an introductory video. I want you to only understand the ideas behind this program, behind this text editor. And you're gonna go as deep as you want in the rabbit hole. I'm gonna propose to you a lot of good resources to become super proficient in Vim that you will have to teach me how to use it, okay? Marbles. So to make it clear why Vim uh, is not uh, very well loved by everyone, because it's cryptic. It has, as I told you, a learning curve. Just to exit this program, you have this command. You have to press ask, colon, Q, exclamation point, return. This is the command for exiting a file in Vim. <laughs> As you can see all around the internet, there is plenty of uh, memes that are making fun of this characteristic of Vim that is super cryptic, nobody understands, but come on, that's too much. I mean, yeah, initially it's, it's kind of cryptic. The first time you open Vim, you, you really don't know how to go out, but yeah, it's gonna become uh, like a second nature and uh, you will love it, my friend. So like all the things in life, it's so much better to go into the practice itself. So ends on. So Vim is a command line editor. So it lives inside our terminal. You saw from my previous video, an introduction to the terminal, you can use it. So what do we do? Given that Vim is a command line terminal, I'm just gonna press command space in my Mac, and then I'm gonna do iTerm. iTerm is just a fancier terminal than the normal one, which is installed, pre-installed in your computer, okay? So I'm gonna go inside my iTerm. All right, now we are inside our terminal. I'm just gonna do a little bigger. Cool. So what is Vim? Well, 
And Vim, at the end of the day, is just a piece of software, right? It's a program, it's a binary file that lives inside our computer. To find where Vim is, we can use this command, which is which, which is just another command, another command line command that um, is gonna find where a binary lives. For example, the command echo. Where does this command live? Well, it lives in bin echo. Of course, you know from the previous lesson that bin contains all the binary files, all the commands that you can use inside your terminal, right? So I'm gonna do which vim, boom. And it's gonna give me the path, in this case, the absolute path toward vim. So we're gonna copy this first part, the path, okay? And then we're gonna cd into it. So you know that we are moving inside this directory, okay? Now I am inside bin. And then I'm just going to do ls in the long way. Boom. Now you can see I have a lot of files. And of course, somewhere there must be, Vim. there is too much stuff. So what do I do? I do my command find in the current directory name. And I'm going to search for Vim, as you can see. Boom. Here it comes. As you can see, I have all the Vim related stuff. So let's understand what is going on. I have my Vim which is a binary file. NeoVim, which is Vim on steroids. Vim is a binary file. If you do get Vim, you're gonna get a bunch of gibberish. As you can see, I have all this gibberish because this is a binary. <clears throat> if I do on the contrary, um, get uh, Vim Tutor, you can see this file. You can see this file. Basically, this is um, a script. A script uh, is a bunch of commands that are running inside my command line, but this is not the goal of the, the video to understand what is script language, just to give you something more. All right, let's go back to the home, and now we are able to start our Vim journey. I'm gonna go to the desktop so we can see what we are doing. And here we are. As you can see, I have already a bunch of files and folders inside my desktop, and we're gonna create another file using Vim. So I'm going to do vim um, foo.txt. So I'm going to create a file txt, enter. And as you can see, it's going to open this black cryptic screen. Wow. So what do I do now? I told you that vim is a model editor, namely it um, has different ways to interact with him. Now, for example, we are in the normal mode. If I try to write something, for example, hello, as you can see, it doesn't work. I have magically gone on the second line because I've pressed involuntary uh, command, which is the little O that is allows you to go on the next line, but it's just by chance. So if I try to write something in the normal mode, nothing is going to work. Of course, something here at the bottom is changing because if I press letters, a Vim is going to take them as commands. For example, when I press O, this is a command for Vim. When I am in normal mode, okay, confusing, let's simply start from the basics. I have this file and I want to insert some letters, some chars. What do I do? Well, I have to press I. I, of course, stands for insert. So magically, my Vim now has changed mode. Now I can type. For example, I can write hello, uh, hello world, mention point. Cool. I've written my first Vim file. Now what do I do? Well, I have finished inserting stuff inside my file. So now I just need to change mode. I just have to go back in the normal mode than a mod when you do some stuff like manipulating files. So what do you do? You have to press ESC. ESC is the toggle command that allows you to move between states. So now I'm in the insert mode, I press ESC, and now I'm back in the normal mode. And to save this file, I have to bid a command. What do we do in BIM? Well, I have to press the colon. As you can see at the bottom, I have the colon that appeared. This is the symbol for commands. When I am in normal mode and I press the colon, BIM understands that, oh, you want to give me a command. What specific command I want to give you? Well, I want to save this file. And the command to save a file is this one, double V, because it stands for write. When we want to save a file in BIM, we write a file. As you can see, there is a lot of mnemonic that is going behind the scene. It's going to be easy to recall all these commands. So we have write, and then you just simply enter. Boom. As you can see now, the file has been saved, has been written. Okay. Now I'm done. Now we have to exit the vim, <laughs> the cryptic command to exit vim. So what do we do? I want to be the command. I just press the colon, then q, that stands for quit, and I'm done. Enter. Boom. You can see here in my desktop, I have the foo.txt file that has been created. Okay. Let's open it just to see what is going on. And then, of course, I have my hello world file.txt. So you have seen uh, very stupidly a little bit of workflow with him. You just open it, you insert tests, you change modes with the ask, and then you just big commands to 
save a file or exit from the file. Easy. Now with this slide, I want to show you some more interesting shortcuts to move around your file and to become a superior while you're coding. As you can see, there are a lot of cryptic uh, commands that you can use to move around. For example, you have the upper G that stands for ground allegedly, allows you to go at the bottom of your file, one G at the top of your file, then you can press zero to go at the first letter of the string, the dollar sign to go at the end of the string. So there are a lot of commands that allows you to really <clears throat> move around. So mm, better commands, these are shortcuts, but Anyway, it's the same idea. There's plenty of them. So I'm suggesting you to learn by doing. Now I'm just showing you how I work, the, the, the most used ones, and then maybe by yourself you can improve by doing it. If you think about doing something, for sure it's gonna be coded inside Vim. For example, you have an idea of um, deleting all the content inside uh, the curly braces of a function. It is coded in Vim. And you will see because this is a tool made for programmers by programmers so there is everything if you think about doing something fast repeatedly it, it is inside vim so you just go to search this specific command you ask chat gpt or stack overflow and you will find the solution so let's create a simple c file for example i have this uh, command it is boiler that stands for boilerplate it is a function that i've created inside my shell another thing maybe for another lesson but basically when I do boiler I have my boiler plate essentially I have a bunch of other files that are included in my file and I have my printf ready to rumble okay let's modify let's uh, do something with this file <clears throat> so I want to insert some code so you know very well that I just have to press I and for insert oh now I'm in the insert mode I can move around with the arrows <clears throat> as you can see or I can uh, move my cursor uh, pressing option click as you can see option click option click with this option I can work with Vim essentially like a normal text editor why click and text click and text that's super easy so I'm gonna option click inside my printf and I'm gonna insert hello world commission point new line well as you can see I've written my piece of code now I want to save it what do I do I press ask colon write okay now my file has been saved. Now I see that there is a mistake in this file. What do I do? I don't have to switch into the insert mode. Well, I could, I can say insert, I move with the arrow and then I just delete the E, boom. Okay, easy, like a normal text editor, but I don't wanna do that. I return in the previous mode, namely the normal mode. Then I press this command, which is U, that stands for undo, go back. It is like the command Z in Echoes. So I press U, undo, I go back on the previous state. Now I just, move with the arrow and I want to cancel this E. What do I do? Well, I press X, boom, has been canceled. So I didn't change the mode. I just uh, made this uh, changement only in the normal mode, which is the mode in which we do all changements, okay? We control the file. It's the mode when we are debugging our code. All right, let's go back. And uh, you saw that it's very tedious to move with uh, the arrow, right? It's very tedious to go very slow. You can move much faster with the with some shortcuts. You can jump word by word, for example, pressing W, like that, word, 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 word. And you can go back with B, stand for back, 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 back. Already you see that you can move faster <clears throat> pressing this command that has a good mnemonic, word and back. I can jump at the end of the line just pressing the dollar sign, see? Or I can go at the initial letter of the string pressing the sign, I don't know how it's called, this sign here. This sign here, press, boom, and you go at the first letter of the string. Now, I don't like this, um, this line. I just want to delete it. What do I do? Well, I can just press X many times, okay? And I'm gonna delete all the string. It's tedious, right? Repetitive. Vim has been thought to be not repetitive and very fast. So I undo what I did. So we go on the previous state. Control R stand for redo. So we have Control R for redo, U for undo. Undo, redo, undo, redo, undo, redo, undo, redo. Back, forth, back, forth. Okay, now I want to delete this line. What do I do? Well, I can press DD, DD. See, I deleted the line very fast. Undo, DD, undo, DD, undo, redo, delete. See how fast we start to move. Then I want to insert some text. I want to insert some text and I don't want to press uh, the I. What can I do? I can press O. O stands for open. You. Basically, open a line. Let's watch. Oh, you see? I add a tab, move, and then I'm into the insert mode. So now I can start to type something. For example, uh, 
print off uh, another hello <laughs> such a fantasy right and then i press ask i want to write some other code what do i do i press o i go directly on the next line with the precision tab then i can write my code for example i declare a variable int n oh cool right i can do stuff very fast then i press ask and then again i'm gonna press o and i go one line below okay i can do for example n is equal to 42 cool ask done so you saw that if you press o little o uh, lowercase o you go on the next line but if you press uppercase o you go on the upper line and you change you switch from normal mode to insert mode so you can write other code you can uh, for example declare another variable and two semicolon ask so you see like the ask is like typing code check typing code check typing code check okay that's the idea you don't need to do that of course you can stay in insert mode all the time you want until you're writing like a normal text editor but when you switch in normal mode you have all the fancy commands that allows you to go fast what do i mean to go fast for for example i need the bigger file so we're gonna copy a lorem file lorem text a lorem generator i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a, a big file i'm gonna copy it okay i'm gonna copy this lorem file and i'm gonna to copy this lorem file inside my vim how do i delete everything look at that i go to the top pressing 1g first ground uh, you can think you you should come up with some mnemonics for yourself it's gonna be useful for example 1g to me it's first ground i don't know why it works and then i do d upper g delete ground so it's gonna delete all the file till the end you see like super fast and then i'm gonna copy my lorem file which is pretty big and then i want to move fast inside this 361 strings file what do i do i want to go at the top so what do i do in normal mode i press one upper g okay first line immediately i press only upper g i go to the ground one g first ground ground first ground you see how i can jump extremely fast inside my file i can go at the end of the line pressing the lower sign immediately i can go back one word at a time i can go on one word at a time as well if i want to delete all these line i can press dd i can go back with undo dd undo and then i just undo again <laughs> press redo i have back my file so as you can see i can go very fast so i have my errors that are like my simple way of moving around the the purists of vim wants you to move with j k h and l because the idea of vim is that you have to keep your fingers very close so you can move extremely fast there is people which is grammatically fast with this tool and they can write at the speed of thought okay so there is no friction with between thought and and code written amazing if you're gonna become super proficient you can do that for example i'm an i'm not very good with women I, i'm just a normal dude and uh, i see that many people have some difficulties initially because there is the learning curve because it's kind of cryptic but it is not come on my friend it's not super cryptic you can learn very easily so now let's say i want to delete uh till na line 10 here what do i do well i have nine lines here that i have to delete under the one i'm currently i'm currently now so i do d stands for delete nine and for nine lines and the arrow boom you see delete nine down you just give some commands in combination then we can do delete dollar sign delete till the end dollar sign do delete zero delete till the initially zero stands for the initial part you can do also delete and this sign here i don't know its name but <laughs> this is uh the command for the initial part the difference between zero and this one is that zero is the position zero indeed of the line this sign is the first char of the string okay so let's say i in this big file i want to find um the word finibus what do i do i just click the forward slash and then i type fini bus enter so every time uh vim is gonna find me a pattern match you see fini bus and then if i press n it's gonna allow me to jump on the next match so it's gonna be n n n n you see i find all the fini bus inside my file n n n n and if i press upper n i do the opposite okay n n n n n all the match inside my file i'll let you imagine how powerful it is when you have a big file you have some name functions and you want to go everywhere this function appears right so really really fast type the name and then you just jump around with it and and that's, i think it stands for new or something like that i don't know and uh yeah that's super useful then you have the command for example upper h that stands for 
I allegedly and allows you to go in the upper part of your file M in the middle of your file and uh, oh yeah there's also L that allows you to move at the bottom of the current piece of file where you have there is a difference between upper L and upper G because upper G goes at the bottom of the total file but um, as you can see upper L goes at the bottom of the current section you're looking for then uh, what can I tell you uh, let's say I want to delete uh, three words in this line I can do delete three words as you as you can see I have deleted three words Vim um, is very powerful in that sense this is the normal mode when I want to do some modification I can for example uh, delete some words altogether or I can delete one char with the X I can replace one char with R I can do RP for example I replaced the high with a P and uh, I can change in uppercase pressing the tilde you see tilde allows you to change the letter from uppercase to lowercase basically you got the idea there is plenty of these commands that you will master doing the job writing I highly suggest you to don't memorize oh, of course you can you can use flashcards to memorize all these ideas all these commands they are mnemonics so it's not gonna be uh, terribly difficult but nonetheless I suggest you to learn on the job because there is a core difference between learning versus acquisition acquisition is when you acquire knowledge through experience and learning is a artificial process that really doesn't work but basically you do learning at school did it work do you remember something from school while acquisition is the practice itself it's when you learn um, to go with a bike biking okay I, I guess you don't have to relearn how to go in the bike because you have acquired that skill right that's the same idea with code it's going to become second nature while you are coding you remember that oh, okay i can do that probably because uh this is just a command for deleting stuff probably they have thought how to do that because they were programmers essentially all you want to do there is a command to do that I mean, you just need to search and while on the job you will learn everything it's going to become second nature it's going to become a second language all right i want you i want just to show you some your commands uh let's do write quit as you can see i can do a combo with commands this is the the double view is for write and quit this for go out so i'm gonna save this file and and here we are now let's do another boilerplate and um, let's write some code which is the thing we want here i have int rc um char star rp as you can see all the times i have these braces in code right this is very handy to have Vim when I, for example, I've made some mistake. For example, here I can have this mistake doing a matrix here, but this is wrong. So I'm gonna do delete inside brace. Boom. <laughs> have, you, have you seen how fast it is? So it's gonna be super easy to change files. Or for example, here I write some gibberish. Now I want to delete everything which is inside the curly braces. So I do delete inside curly brace. Boom. That's the idea of Vim. You have commands. In the normal mode that allows you to <clears throat> modify the file in a very fast and elegant way now let's write again some gibberish <clears throat> there is another mode that i haven't talked to you about which is the visual mode the visual mode is very cool because you press v the stand for visual you can do something like that you highlight everything you want to delete you press d oh you deleted everything you do or you can do for example visual and you press the upper arrow and you can tabulate you can do an indentation so you understand that it's pretty handy when we are dealing with code all right this is a very silly stupid workflow with vim now i want to give you um, some uh, resources to go as down as you want in this rabbit hole okay of course first suggestion is ChatGPT. for example here i used <clears throat> give me the most uh, useful commands for beginners as you can see i have a lot of them some you have seen in the video i've just made uh now i see that i haven't used the copy one which is the yank command basically you press yy and you copy a string and then you can pass it with the p command basically you can do that yank yank past 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 and do and do and do, and do. see yank i don't know why they use this term and not copy for example cp would have made much more sense but maybe not because yank stands for pull and this gives the idea of a buffer because in beam there are also buffers but this you will learn by doing as i was telling you anyway as you can see here we have the search term uh, for a pattern which is pretty useful then we have the replace of occurrences of foo with bar again this is very useful and yeah 
some other stuff. Basically, ChatGPT, it's already a very good partner if you want to master Vim. Another cool website is called Interactive Vim that I suggest to you. You go here and then you have like a space <laughs> when it doesn't work. Oh yeah, now it works. As you can see, you have a very friendly interactive tool that allows you to do all this stuff. Um, yeah, so basically you just go on VMS2 basic mode, as you can see the insert mode and so forth. You just press insert, ask. Basically, it's just a tool for you to really begin, all right? I suggest to you. Next, of course, is the lecture from the missing semester um, page, which is amazing. It gives you a lot of stuff, which is super interesting. You watch this video, which is pretty well done. Uh, this is from MIT, so pretty powerful. And here you have a lot of theory that you can read and is gonna be super useful for you. There are some links to other useful um, tools. And yeah, I will suggest to you. Here I have also our list of resources. Ah, for example, Beam Adventures, which is pretty sick. Basically, this is a game that allows you to learn Beam by playing. <laughs> so, um, for example, you can move around here, you see, the KL, I was telling you that for the purest of Vim, you just move around with that. And then you have this very silly game by which you, you just go around and so forth. Okay, just a silly game for you, practice Vim. Then what do we have here? We have Practical Vim, yeah, which is a good book. I read the initial part. This is like the Bible of Vim. You have everything you need. No, I don't really like books. I think that they are too slow. Basically, when you read books, stuff doesn't go fast. So that's not my thing. But I, I read the first part. I don't recall anything. So <laughs> I don't suggest for me, but maybe for you. Then just check these uh, resources, which are in the this page. Amazing. The last one I want to suggest to you is Vim Genius. Become a Vim Genius. Basically, that's how we like because um, this is a flashcard style game designed to make you faster. It's free and you don't need to sign up. Thank God. <laughs> right? So you can start now. For example, I'm a beginner. And then you do your stuff. You do your stuff. And uh, yeah, this allows you to move in a gameish fashion. And that's it, my friend. Now, I told you that there is plenty of alternatives to Vim. And Vim is just one text editor of many ones. The only thing is that Vim is an idea. It's not only uh, um, a text editor. What do I mean? You see my terminal. I have the Vim way, the Vim idea when I write my commands in the terminal. For example, I want to write uh, echo, hello, and this piece of text, right? Now I am in the insert mode, as you can see from here. Like in Vim, I change pressing ask. Then I am in the normal mode, so I can do DD and everything is going to be deleted. Basically, I am the Vim idea, which is embedded in my terminal. This is just another piece of software, another piece of code that it is in my shell. Anyway, so I can switch from insert to normal, even here. And I get all the beauty of moving very fast, word by word. For example, now I switch to normal. So I go back, back, back. You see? DD. And all the other commands which are embedded in Vim. So the Vim idea can be everywhere. The model way of typing can be everywhere in every text editor. I just want to show you Visual Studio Code, uh, which is probably the most used one now because it has a lot of stuff. Uh, and indeed, it is good. It is good. It's just me that I'm an old idiot. I don't know. I like the um, very fast way of Vim. When you click Vim, it's already open. It's super fast. And the minimalistic aspect of Vim. You have a black screen and that's all. And your brain. <laughs> that's all you have. Now, let's try to open... Um, file here. Okay. It is um, already a, a decent uh, project. It has many files. I have a make file. I have other C files. And as you can see, I have all my files that I can see all together. Uh, I have my file here. I have all my files. And then I can just do something like that. I can see all of them together. And um, yeah, basically when you have big projects, it's better to have a visualization of everything. Hence Visual Studio Code. You can also have a terminal here. So if you want to launch your program, so you can just open the terminal and do, and do your stuff. So it's good. It's good. Of course, you have pros and cons with everything, but choose the thing you prefer the most. Here you have also a debugger, which is pretty useful. Um, yeah, of course, here you can you can have the Vim mode installed. You just need the extension, which is called uh, Vim. And you have the, the Vim way inside Visual Studio Code, you see? Because I repeat to you, Vim is an idea is a way of writing stuff all right i think that's that's it for this uh introduction to vim and uh yeah you're super able to 
follow me on my course on the C programming language. Enjoy, my friend.